Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, welcome to the Think Tech Studios. This is Security Matters Hawaii, and I'm with Gary Thomas today. We're going to get into some cloud video. We're going to get into some artificial intelligence. We're going to get into some neural networking. We're going to push him as far as he's allowed to. He is the sales director for North America with a company called Arculis. Uh, this is a first for Hawaii to hear about Arculis. So, Gary, appreciate you coming in. Yeah, Andrew, Welcome thanks to for the studio. Absolutely. Thank you for no having me. No worries. Sure. So, I'll start with this one question I like to ask everybody. What keeps you up at night? You know, you're an industry veteran, man. So what 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 worries you? Uh, what keeps me up at night? Uh, uh, if it's not not flying on uh, red eye flights, uh, <laughs> that keeps me up. But no, on a professional note, I think uh, a couple of things. One is, uh, you know, how do we make our environment or our, our, our world a safer place? Right? You know, you look around. Every seems like every few weeks we've got some sort of uh, shooting going on at one of our schools. That's obviously terrible. Uh, it's horrible. And uh, so, but the other thing is, Arculis, we've, we're bringing to market a disruptive technology. Oh, good. Right? So, uh, video cloud, IoT uh, as a service is, is changing the industry uh, from a technology um, uh, market. So, keeping me up is, is how do we bring this to market? How do we, how do we educate yeah. customers, right, about the, the, the value proposition of moving uh, video to the cloud, uh, why it's more secure? Uh, and just, uh, you know, we're, we're at a point right now, we're in stealth mode, so, okay. but we are uh, uh, bringing it to market uh, in beta now and launching it October 1st, and so it's just, how do we educate customers on, yeah. on the product? So you have a small market, just North America to deal with. Do you have North Canada? America. Do you have South America? Yeah, we, we, did, you, did you get a small we're, travel plan? We're focusing plan? on North, uh, <laughs> North America. Good. So, so give us, uh, let's give our, give our audience just a little bit of your background, a little bit of your history on the industry, you know, kind of last, the last 30 years, not 20, no, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so just you know, a little about myself. I've yeah. uh, been in the technology sales industry for 25, 26 years, okay. uh, 12 years in the IT space, and then the last uh, 13 years in physical security. Awesome. Uh, a lot of background in uh, startups doing video analytics early on, and then uh, more recently with a company called Milestone, mm -hmm. which is actually a uh, market leader in uh, uh, IP video management platform. And uh, we actually, our company was actually spun out of uh, Milestone. Arcles is actually a sister company to Milestone. So okay. I joined our company, Arcles, uh, November uh, last year. Awesome. Yeah, Milestone's one of the big, what are they, 30, 40% market share globally? Yeah, I'm not sure it's, the exact market share, but they, they're a worldwide market leader for like 10 straight years. I yeah. mean, it's a, it's a one, Canon one, company. It's one of our, our favorite products. And, and for those of you that don't know our industry in particular, last year, Canon, uh, Canon printers, Canon copiers bought Milestone. They also bought Access, one of our biggest video players globally. I think the market leader globally. And now we've got them working on a, what I believe will be an industry leading sort of cloud based video platform. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit too as well. Um, so <clears throat> thanks for coming out. First of all, Gary's uh, came out here to do a show for us. We have uh, our symposium for Safe for Wise going on up the street. Uh, so he's going to be on stage in just a little bit, but we got him here in the studio early this morning. So if you got some questions, we do have a phone number uh, that's, uh, I think, you, I don't know if you have to zoom in on that, Ray, but if you want to call in, do that. It's a new feature for the studio, so we're, we're definitely available to take your call. And I want to get um, to you kind of soon about um, sort of the history of Arcules. Like, so, and it, it, well, but a little more like your passion for coming from Milestone, which is this industry leader, and I know you were there a while, and, you know, they have great stuff going on at Milestone. So what, what would you think we said, wow, you know what, this, this new Arcules thing, cloud, what, what made you want to go there first before we sort of get into the specifics of Arcules? Yeah, so I th good question. So I, I think when I was at Milestone, uh, working in Silicon Valley, uh, I started, to, you know, talking to customers. Well, first of all, you know, Arcules was actually a division of Milestone right. uh, for seven Indeed. years. It was the incubation lab that basically developed new technologies and then handed off to product management. Uh, so a year, a little over a year ago, I started looking at what uh, the incubation team was working at. They're looking at video cloud. So I started talking to all my customers and started asking, uh, you know, are you guys looking at cloud initiatives, mm -hmm. right? Because sure, who's uh, not, right? And what I found out was uh, probably ninety percent of my customers 
we're looking at moving video to the cloud sometime. Maybe not today yeah, or, or sure six when. months, but you know, whether it's 2018, 2019, 2020, they're all looking at initiatives. Mm -hmm. How do we move our physical security up in the cloud? Sure. How do we do it securely? How do we uh, reduce uh, IT operations yeah. uh, costs? And uh, so I think that was a driver for me. I see. So I really started uh, hyper-focusing on what uh, Arcalese was doing, actually the incubation team at the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then the formation of the company was, uh, so the time the incubation team with the milestone had 10 employees, okay. I think six developers, and they had uh, Andreas uh, 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 Peterson, who's our, our CEO, uh, went and talked to the milestone board of directors, wow. and, or executive team, I should say, about what they're doing, and, and they had a you know idea of how to dominate video cloud IoT market, right, sure. from an enterprise perspective, and uh, said, so, you know, we need 35, 40 developers. Wow. And at the time, Michael. They went, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. My, uh, you know, the exec team said, well, we budgeted, I think, you know, two more engineers for you in 2018. So, but uh, Lars Tengard, who's the CEO uh, at Milestone, and Andreas, you know, came up with ideas like, well, we should spin out this group into mm -hmm. a separate company. So they actually went to Milest or to Canon, the parent company of Milestone, mm -hmm. And pitched it. Uh, Canon executive said, "We love it. We think the cloud is the future." No doubt. And uh, what do you need? Wow. So, uh, wow. Uh, blank check. Uh, <laughs> not quite Don't blank check, that. but 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 you know they funded us uh, for three years, and uh, uh, now we are. Today we're sitting about 65 employees. Sure. We've got 45 developers on a team. Wow. We are a cloud-first company, pure play cloud, and uh, we're we're charging forward. So it was a brilliant move by. You know, Andreas, the Milestone exec team mm -hmm. in Canada, to look at the big picture. Otherwise, we're an incubation team that has a few developers focus on it, mm -hmm. and we're kind of tip, dipping our, our, our toe in the, sure. in the water saying, hey, we're cloud, right? Sure. But this way, being a, uh, a company, we can hyper-focus on mm -hmm. being a cloud-first ground up, right? We're doing something that's disruptive and changing the market. Sure. Yeah, and then for the if for those of you that aren't aren't sure, you're thinking about this for yourselves, there's a few models. You know, you've got your your VMS, your standard classic model that's on site. So you've got costs for maintaining hard drives, which burn up about every ten thousand hours, unless you use the enterprise class, which burn up about every thirty thousand hours. Regardless, you've got to replace those, they go down, you're missing video. And then um, you've got the bandwidth connectivity that it takes to, to get to your video. Or maybe you've got holes poked in your firewall, so there's less security for doing mobile type things with something that's home-based. And you've got the um, sort of hybrid solutions where some people have got some stuff on site and they've got some stuff in the cloud. And then you've got the pure cloud play, which has been, there's been a few players in it. There's a couple people trying it, but no one on the level of Milestone has come at this yet and said, wow, actually I should say the level of Canon, and said, we'll take some resources like this, dedicate it and build a box. So we're all, you know, in the industry, folks like me are all chomping at the big one, woo, when do we see it? When do we get our hands on it? And I happen to sneak a little beta, so I've got a little bit of it, but um, Thank you. it's good stuff. Yeah, I've, I've been playing with it. Um, so so how, how, did, how did you decide finally to say, you know, I'm going to go full time. So they, once they said they're going to fund it, they could, could afford to hire some folks and get you in there. Because you, you've been at the sort of the top of the industry for a while in, in your other roles. Absolutely. So this is, uh, had you taken on anything brand new before? Yeah, I've, 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 uh, I've done a few startups in the past. I worked at Agent VI, which is an analytic company oh, sure. uh, back uh, 90 or what, 2000. Six and to 2009. I also brought Briefcam to market. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I in forgot about you. Briefcam for that's right. So I, I helped them launch the product in the United States back in 2010, and which actually is an interesting thing. Uh, uh, and Canon Brief, just bought Briefcam. Canon just bought Briefcam, a video <laughs> synop a market leader in video, video synopsis technology. Sure. Uh, so that's now a Canon company. I think somewhere down the road, it smart would, purchase. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it you know somewhere down the road, we'll hope to see Briefcam. Integrated with uh, Arcalise product. Oh, sure, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, it works so well, and it works well anywhere you use it. And if you're not familiar with that, just go to their website, check it out. Um, awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the the benefits. Let's look at. I, I touched briefly on the some of the architecture. You know, you've got on-prem, you've got hybrid, and then you've got totally off-site. Um, let's let's talk about some of those other benefits there. Now, Hawaii, we have a super high cost of electricity. 
So running those machines is a piece of that ROI. What else do you see as, or as a return on investment for people offloading video out to the cloud versus keeping it on-prem? Well, so we talk about, uh, I like to talk about total cost of operation. People mm -hmm. think of TCO as total cost of ownership, but it's really about operation, right? Yes. So what, what the cloud brings to, uh, you know, from a benefit standpoint, is reducing that cost of operation from an IT perspective, right? So you're talking about one piece of right. There's there's many elements of that. You mm -hmm. know, toss of, total cost of operation, but. Uh, when we can push out software updates uh, mm -hmm. automatically, right, uh, without scheduling uh, IT resources to do software yes. updates, security patches can be pushed out automatically uh, without scheduling. Sometimes, if you think about in the traditional world, we're scheduling weeks out to do a security patch or a software yeah. update, right? Uh, we're rolling trucks um, to do software updates, right? Because it's on-prem, it's not, we can't get to it remotely. Absolutely. and and. Um, you know, I got customers in the Bay Area that uh, they'll tell you that they spend a thousand to two thousand dollars a day rolling a truck, wow. and they've got, you know, hundred locations, maybe five hundred locations. Okay. Right. So the value proposition, we, we start talking about the ability to, to do those software updates uh, automatically, mm -hmm. pushed out, without IT uh, operations, we're, we could save them thousands of dollars. Right. And, right. and the management piece, so I, and I always, obviously, I always get the latest version. And we can also probably do the firmware updates to cameras at some point, right? We'll be able yep. to push those on out through the VMS because we have that capability, uh, which is what we're all looking for, right? It's one thing to have a VMS. It's another thing, which is, you know, all that software lives in the cloud. That's awesome for us. But we've got to work on getting those patches out because we have a thousand endpoints out there and there's still people driving around updating every camera or going to a site, getting on the network, up, updating eight here, go to another site, update eight there. I mean, we're so, we, another big process. Absolutely. We're, we're trying to. Uh simplify the user experience, right? Sure. So whether that's the system integrator, IST, or the end user, uh, from a deployment to a day-to-day -day operation, mm -hmm. you know, look at the Arcalise portal, uh, our interface, it's a workflow, yeah. right? And uh, much more intuitive than traditional video management platforms uh, from bringing everything under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, the end users, and they, they struggle with this, and they actually don't even know. And actually, I, I have even other issues that I think cloud can help us straighten out is that like they'll, they don't necessarily look at their video system unless they've had some kind of problem that they want to research. And, and they may go for days, maybe weeks without seeing it and something will be offline. Something won't be working and they don't know. And then they'll try to go in and do their investigation and find out, wow, this thing was offline. And when we've got some cloud activity, we've got a way to get those alerts out to somebody, out to a mobile device or we can let someone know instead of the thing sitting back there on the, on the, the desk, you know, we're not paying any attention to it unless you need it. Absolutely, that's a great point. And, and one of the things Arcalise is doing with uh, with our AI logic or analytics is uh, we have uh, uh, alerts pop up for cameras. So if you have a you know a foggy lens, dirty lens, spider on the lens, mm -hmm. the camera's been adjusted out of, out of the original field of view. It's been yeah. bumped or whatever. Somebody moved it so they can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, smoke detection. So these are things that basically will notify the end user that camera has some sort of issue from a quality of video, right? You're yeah. doing the video, right? And then it can actually, you can, uh, through the system, the portal, open up a trouble ticket, yep. assign it to a tech. They can go out and fix it, clean it up, whatever needs to be done, mm -hmm. and then notify the end user that it's, it's all been cleared out. So Yeah, that usability piece is massive. We're talking about Arcules. We'll be back in one minute after we pay a few bills. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on ThinkTech's Likeable Science Show. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we delve in the magical, magical, fascinating world of science. How science applies to your life, why you should care about science, what impact science has on you and on those around you, why you need to know some science. It's a fun, interesting, painless way to learn some good science that you can use. See you there. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha.
Hey, welcome back to the Think Tech Studios. This is Security Matters Hawaii. I am talking with Gary Thomas from Arculis, and we're getting into some of the benefits of AI and business intelligence for cloud, you know, applications. What do you? What's your vision? What do you think we're going to accomplish with this stuff going forward? Uh, from an AI perspective, uh, you know, so we're. we're you know, when you look at our platform, right, we're actually aggregating sensor data. That could be video uh, sensors being cameras, mm -hmm. uh, IoT uh, sensor data. So aggregating that and correlating that information uh, into either business intelligence or more security applications, right? So if you look at, like, business intelligence, uh, you know, look at a big box retailer, right? Okay. You can look at an end cap. Say we got GoPro sitting on an end cap and a, a big box retailer. Okay. Now we can, from a business intelligence, start providing information that, you know, uh, shows traffic flow, pass okay. the end cap, and okay. we can tell you how many people actually walk by the end cap uh, mm. over eight hour period, right? So eight, over eight hours, a thousand people walk by, and then- and Nobody bought any, <laughs> well, that's a problem. <laughs> you can talk, well, that's, talent, that's, that's correlated back to the point of sale, right? Sure. But, but you can take that data and say, okay, uh, over that eight hour period, a thousand people walk by, but 200 people stop, pick mm. up the GoPro product, and they actually spent two minutes looking uh, at the product. Okay. So now we can actually correlate traffic flow, people counting, and dwell times, dwell time, sure. right? So go. from a business intelligence standpoint, and then of course, security-wise, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that we're doing. We can't get into too much detail, but uh, if you think about what AI can do, if you think about, uh, uh, for example, uh, go back, you know, a couple of decades to the Oklahoma Federal Building bombing mm -hmm. situation, right? A situation where AI can be applied there would be uh, a van pulls up across the street. Uh, or, yeah, a van pulls up uh, in front of the building, actually. Uh, guy gets out of the truck. He runs across the street and mm -hmm. jumps into a, a car heading the opposite direction. It takes off. Right there, that's an immediate red flag, right? Sure. You know, you, sure. you see a vehicle pull up, and a guy jumps out, yeah. goes in the opposite direction. Yep. That's, that's a major concern. We all know what happened, of course, uh, with that horrific uh, situation. But that's an example of AI could actually be used to apply some logic yeah, and usually correlation. The, usually the delivery guy goes to the back of the truck and unloads something. He doesn't run away and leave his vehicle, right? Yeah, exactly. So that, so. Those, and that's not necessarily intuitive. And even an operator, a live operator, a human, might watch that to see what's going on before realizing, hey, man, that the clock's maybe this 10, 9, 8, and, you know, he's, he really got some problems yeah, and, to take care of. And then, the, you know, AI, of course, is a force multiplier, right? Obviously. You know, because in the, in the case of the operator is looking at, he could be looking at 20 cameras, could be looking at 100 yeah, cameras. Yeah, he might have missed that completely. He's going to miss it, sure. and, and a good chance, right? So uh, AI brings the ability to automated real-time awareness, mm -hmm. right, uh, and event notification, and then you figure out what that response is. And so your lab team, so we saw from uh, at MIPS this year, which is the Milestone Integration Partner Summit, we saw uh, Tanmay talk to us, Tanmay Bakshi talked to us quite a bit about um, uh, the, those, learn, those neural networks, like some are supervised and some are unsupervised. So are these pieces of the AI toolkit that uh, we could expect to see out of Arculis in the future? Absolutely. So we have an AI development team that's working on, uh, awesome. you know, uh, a, a number of algorithms. I'm not sure what I can actually go into, but uh, <laughs> but, they, but they are neural network algorithms, right? So they're okay. learning technology. Yeah. Um, they get smarter as they're applied in the field, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's correlating that data with seeing. It's actually learning, and mm -hmm. that's uh, it's a great thing about uh, you know one of the reasons we're doing the beta sites right now is you know by the time we launch the algorithms have to be much smarter. Sure. So they're pulling time. in data from an environment for our users out there. The what we're talking about is the ability to have a camera that actually learns what all the things are in an environment. It knows what's a chair, what's a table, what's a human, what's a pet. What, and then it also knows what's not supposed to be there or what's rarely there or what's only there on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. or whatever. And, and we can build business intelligence around that kind of knowledge Absolutely. Once, these, once these neural networks learn. And the trick is computing power, which is... Available in the cloud? Absolutely. You don't have that sitting in your back of your car seat. You don't have it, you know, people don't have build out offices. You need massive power for this. And that's that's another value proposition, right, is is no longer do customers need to make the investment of enterprise uh, class servers sitting mm -hmm. on-prem, right? That's right. all moved up in the cloud. That's, an, Just to that's run sitting that. up in the Google Cloud, right? right. So uh, that's a huge uh, benefit. Another thing, if you think about also, uh, the, the problem today with traditional on-prem solutions is you have to value engineer that solution to be the worst case scenario from a, from a performance standpoint, right? A peak. Okay, sure. So if you think about uh, you know, shopping holidays and you're a big box retailer, okay. uh, 
on, on Black Friday, right? Uh, biggest biggest shopping day of the year, Black Friday. Uh, you have to, from a retailer, processing that video, the analytics, that has to be engineered for that peak performance, right? Uh, so yeah, the, yeah, the rest of the year you have 10% of that traffic. So you're talking about a massive investment thing. from a hardware perspective, right? Sure. Uh, plus IT supporting all that. So when you move everything to the cloud, you know, with with Arcalis, you know, you know, the benefit of the cloud is elasticity, right? Mm -hmm. We dynamically, uh, the system can dynamically uh, add or uh, reduce uh, processing power based mm -hmm. on performance. So now yeah. instead of uh, uh, building that 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 network out and the hardware infrastructure to support the peak performance, we dynamically uh, add processing up and down. Same thing with bandwidth, right? So you're not paying for uh, all that infra upfront investment. You pay for what you use. Right. So yeah. So that you're always ready for surges. Yes. Because it kind of dynamically scale to address the surge, but then you're not paying for all that when you didn't need it. So I I, I equate that to like you know how a lot of people think oh I need. I've got a store video for 90 days, for example, and then they'll they'll get their storage set up, and then they'll 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 slowly decide, oh, I, if I use less frames, I didn't really need such so much hardware. So they'll start off with like 15 frames. They'll say, oh, well, five frames would have done it for me. So yeah. that's a similar sort of issue where you you don't want to ever over purchase for your back the back end of your technology, and cloud's going to allow us not to do that. Down to the end user. Absolutely. So do you do you is the vision? Um, for the product, a, a sort of a subscription service, a channel service. What's the? Because this is also new. We're always we're always kind of wondering as an integrators, how are we going to sort of see this package? You know, what, what do we offer to the customer? What do what do you foresee? You know, you're uh, how yeah. are you still figuring it out? So whatever you can can tell. So us. so great question. So we are. It will be a subscription service. Pay you know uh, pay as you go on a monthly basis. Okay. Uh, you know, we are changing it from a capex investment for customers sure. to an opex. Right. Very good. So it's monthly recurring fee. So we're still working through some of the pricing models, but you know it, it is uh, on a, uh, a monthly fee and, and usage base. And will you will you be able you think to ad hoc sort of add in some AI where you need it, like put some AI into Absolutely. this channel for dwell time, and maybe for this channel uh, this is a big fire. It's a dusty area, so I need a fire. I need to have the fire analytic, but not not maybe all analytics everywhere. Or, or do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. So you'll be able to with the system. We and we may have a couple different levels of a product, right? An enterprise product sure. and then maybe a base unit. The base unit you could out a la carte add in AI uh, logic to some cameras, a subset, right? Gotcha. And that's basically going in the portal and turning on and off mm -hmm. uh, different devices for those type of features, right? Sure. Um, enterprise may be, you get everything, right? As soon as a new, new feature update comes out. And the nice thing about our platform, right? Gone are the days of waiting four, six months yeah, for the new for, build. For the new new build, right? And, and then you, you got to test it to make sure it doesn't break everything. Yeah. So now we're, yeah. we push software updates out. It could be daily. It could be weekly. Sure. Right. Same thing. Security patches. So um, you know, it's all it's all automated. And what's the vision for working with the the camera partners that we have out there? Do you? Um, I know there's OnViv standards, and OnViv can be limited because you can only get the stream, and sometimes you can't control the camera features. So, what's your thoughts? Have you guys debated any of that yet, or? So, so we will support OnViv. Uh, so we'll, you know, they're obviously the massive uh, uh, customer base running running OnViv drivers, but also being a spin out of Milestone. We're going to be able to tap into, you know, Milestone. I'm not sure what it is today. They got over probably about 7,000 custom drivers <laughs> wow. uh, for third-party cameras, right? So we're going to be able to tap into a pretty large subset of that number. Okay. So out of the gate, uh, you know, if you're looking at, you know, you know, the market leaders and IP cameras, whether it's, you know, Axis, you know, Sony, sure. Bosch, um, you know, Samsung or Hemwa, go down, go down you, the list, right? We, we, should, we should be able to support it, yeah. right? We always, awesome. do, we always do recommend, you know, with OnVis to, to, to test drivers, but, you yeah. know, I don't think uh, camera support, if you're using top 10 leading manufacturers, is, should be a problem. Awesome. That's really good to know. And, it, and obviously, that can grow a lot easier in the cloud. So adapting, you know, when you, when you get a new library built for a line of camera, because those guys are also coming out with new cameras every... I don't know. Every, it seems like every six months right? oh, yeah. we have a new build, uh, which is you know probably new firmware from those guys with new feature sets and things like that. So you know the ability for to push one thing out into your engine that updates all those engines in the cloud, right? It makes it just one, a one-time thing, and all of a sudden everything works. I think I think there's so much advantage there, and what I. I guess maybe, do you think it's just bandwidth that's finally allowed us to do this? You know, because it's, we've talked about it for a while, but, you know, we, is it, is it 5G? Is it the, the, that 5G's coming? Was it 4G? What do you think tipped the scale? Because to me, video cloud 
it really works, and I don't see how anyone won't do it in the future. I don't think you would be able to buy anything but cloud, personally. Maybe it, maybe it's 10 years out, don't get me wrong, but. I think it's, it's, you, it's a combination. Think? One is, is bandwidth is, is uh, obviously there's a, no issue with bandwidth these days, right? So much more, more scalable. Uh, the other thing is is processing GP, GPU processing from like the go, the guys over at uh, Nvidia mm -hmm. that has enabled the AI piece to really be able to handle that uh, deep learning uh, logic okay. and processing because that's very compute intensive. So I think uh, uh, GPU processing, the bandwidth, and then also security. Um, today, uh, there's no doubt that moving your infrastructure up into the cloud is more secure than an on-prem. Oh, from a cyber perspective, yes, yeah, for sure, right. Uh, so I think those are kind of three key elements. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I've seen, I've been watching this for a while, and there's been a few, again, a few companies that have dipped in, and we're, I'm really happy to see Milestone and, and Canon fund this because I feel like now we've got a super high-tech company taking a look at what's possible, and that only is only going to help the industry move further down this path, and hopefully the end users will see the value there, you know, we still got a lot of guys, and in the old IT guys, you remember there's always the picture of them hu like hugging their servers, yeah. and they don't want to give up their, their, their iron, you know, but there's so much more available to us in the cloud, and you put the money in bandwidth and, and let it live up there, it'll take care of you a whole lot better. Very interesting. Um, so, let's talk about the most exciting thing so far. You've sort of been there uh, since a little bit late last year. What's, uh, what's the most exciting thing at Arculis right now? I know, uh, I mean, I know Andreas, I know some of your team, they're, they're great, so I'm sure the folks are fun. What, what, do you guys, uh, what do you guys really stand up and cheer about? <laughs> I think, uh, you know, success. I mean, we, we have uh, uh, a really great culture, right? We actually talk about, uh, we have a culture of superheroes, really great, oh, smart, brainiac nice. people. But, but really, bigger picture is uh, what we're doing within the industry. It's, like I said, it's a disruptive technology. We're changing mm -hmm. the industry. Uh, you know, we, we get excited when we talk to customers and we understand their problems that, you know, we don't want Windows servers to the edge anymore. We don't want to be rolling trucks, yeah. right? You know, they look at what we can do and it's like, wow, you can save us thousands of dollars and several hundred thousand dollars in some cases, right? Those type of things. And then applying logic from the artificial intelligence, right? And IoT sensors, right? That's a whole other element to talk about mm -hmm. is IoT. Uh, the things that we're doing is, is it is really game changing, and we're doing it for the enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at other folks out there in the cloud space, they're really focused on small business, right? Right. We're actually the first company in the industry from a cloud perspective, pure cloud play solution that's actually addressing, you know, AI, cloud, IoT integration for the for the enterprise. Right, and the right? enterprise is always a place to look for a lead. If you want to see where the world's going, follow those guys. Gary, it's a real pleasure having you. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me on. We're going to head down to the symposium for a safer Hawaii. I hope you signed up because it's sold out. Uh, we'll be down there the rest of the day. Um, meanwhile, appreciate you joining us at the ThinkTech Studios. This is Security Matters Hawaii, and we'll see you next time. Aloha.